What up, beautiful people? This is Eddie Nicholas, and I'm here in Montclair at the Crane Park facility. Right now, we have people speaking in matters of Black Lives Matter, which we all do know. You know, this mask is working, but we try to do our best. Um, anyway, right now, I'm here with a very special young lady to me. I've seen her go through high school. She's now attending college. She was former president of NAACP, Miss Adair. Not former president, but I was a part of it. Very collectively. Oh, very collectively. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. You know, she had to correct me. You know these young <laughs> folks. But we love her dearly. Today, what does today mean to you, especially as far as being a young black female and growing up in the township of Montclair? Um, I'm much older than you, so I was very aware of the disparity in some of the racial tensions going on in the 60s and 70s. But this is the 21st century. What is it like for you growing up in this township and especially participating in today? And by the way, you did a beautiful job of singing all the verses Thank and lift every voice and yes, sing. Yes, we did. We had to. Mm -hmm. I think for me, so I'm a college student. Mm -hmm. I'm two years into college. And I think the most important part of this is that I'm back home. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are back home. And of course, we went through the school system and we knew how it felt. But then we went on to our, our school. So be it, to be able to come back and be a part of the change and re rework what we had to go through is just, the timing is almost mm -hmm. impeccable. 
impeccable and um, it's good to see other people mm -hmm. and it's it feels like home because mm -hmm. a lot of these people we were doing this work before we left mm -hmm. right so it's we just picked up right where we were mm -hmm. and just continued mm -hmm. um, from mm -hmm. there and it's a uh, it's heavy on my heart as an artist because when you perform you know it's supposed to be a, a jubilous thing but not today this performance felt a little a little different from me and being able to see uh, the people while I was seeing from my view and see the signs and see their hearts, it was just one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. Yes, especially um, in Montclair. It was okay. a di display of Montclair that I, I hadn't yet seen. Hundreds yet. of people gathered. Right, exactly. I can't wait to see the numbers. Yes. Um, what do you have to say to our youth and especially to our seniors and people still living in Montclair? Yes. With like a question of hope, something uplifting. Yes. What I would say is talk. A lot of one of the things that someone just said just now is um, make sure you're talking to your people. Black people need to talk to white people. White people need to talk to white people. Black people need to talk to black people. Everybody needs to be talking to each other because there's things that can be done on uh, the macro level, right? So this is a macro level mm -hmm. um, display, but a lot of the work comes on the micro level. It's when you're sitting at your dinner tables. It's when you're in your, your group chats to mm -hmm. the to the young people. You're in your group chats, um, Snapchat, Instagram. That's where um, the conversations. The micro to be. starts the grassroots. Thank you. And when your friends say something that is troubling or problematic, fix it. Just fix, fix it. it right, right there. there. And 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 it's, you're done. After you do that, you're you're moving on. And we've made just a little bit of progress and that's what we can ask for right now and that's all we can ask for right. a little bit of progress well i will say today montclair has made some strides in the progress yes. and yes. what they did today yes. darian thank you so much thank you thank, thank you. you we were at the precinct and all of a sudden said some somebody is had a heat stroke somebody had a heat stroke i'm like what, what? it turns out to be Alyssa. she's on the ground and she says i'm still speaking I'm still gonna go speak. I'm still speaking. Like, don't take me off the list. I'm still speaking. I was like, all right, like, don't worry. We're gonna hear you. So I want everybody to take uh, close attention to the speech that you're about to hear. Thank you. Before I start, I just want to say. Justice don't wait for sunny, clear weather. Justice don't wait for a cool breeze. Justice is us, justice is where we stand in the rain and shine, shine everything. That is justice, that is us. And I am angry. Let me rephrase myself to something that you will all understand. I am an angry black woman. Hey y'all, we're still out here in Lackawanna Plaza. I'm Eddie Nicholas and I am here with Alyssa Brown. Powerful young lady. I've seen her do speeches from the NAACP and she's currently in school, correct? In college. And she is doing her thing and she's out here today. She did a powerful speech on the black man, on her brothers and her sisters and against police brutality. I done subjected that and I prefaced that Tell us about why you are out here today. I'm out here for those who can't speak. I'm out here for people like my cousin who are right now, he's in the ICU. We don't know whether or not he's gonna wake up. I'm here for people like him. I'm here for people who marched. I'm here for my grandmother. I'm here for my ancestors. I'm here for me. I'm here, I'm, I'm tired of surviving. I want to live. Mm -hmm. I want to live life to the fullest. I don't wanna have to survive. Can you give me a little poem before we close you out in reference to young people and to the cause that we're marching for today? Because I love the way you speak so eloquently and when you talk, you minister. And in your ministry, we hear your words. So I want you to close out with like a little poem and some words of joy, some words of, of, of unity, words of it's going to be a better day. I know I put you on the spot. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. We are from a generation that is undecided. I'm restless. You're restless. We can't help but change things. 
We're tired of trying to change. We want a solution. And trust and believe the kids of today, they're going to get it. So my words of encouragement and my words of joy for you today are to keep marching, keep moving forward. Don't be scared. Miss Brown, as I always say, walk in caution, not in fear. And she just ended it with, don't be scared. Thank you so much, my queen. Thank continue you so to much. do the work, continue to do the Definitely. mission, and continue to keep the power and the struggle alive. Power to the people. Power. The young people are making it. yourself. Because there's going to be some dark days ahead where your friends and your pals is going to fall off. But I want to ask you a thought-provoking question. Are you going to keep the faith? And all you got to do, everybody, you to have a mirror in your house and walk past your mirror every day and say, you're going to be all right. A change is going to come. Sam Cooke sung that song years ago. A change is going to come. So I just want to challenge all of us today. The pen is mightier than the sword. Think about that. Because if we can go to the polls, hello, after the protest, where do we go from here? You gotta have a plan. We must be registered to vote. And watch this, you have to be registered in your local municipality first. You just can't jump to the presidency. You have to vote for your council, board of education, come on somebody, the sheriff of your town. County executive. How many know what the county executive does? They're the ones responsible for the money coming into the city. So that's why you gotta have the right county executive so we can have free access to the money. Watch this. I don't want to take over the table. I just want to see at the table. I told my sons on the way over here, I said, it's like a father. I have two sons, but I tell one of them, I got the food on the table, one of you just sit down and eat. The other one just look at them eat. And this happens every day. After a while, that other son is gonna get a little upset. And he gonna say, why is he eating and I can't eat? Only until I say, come son, you sit at the table, you can have whatever he has. When we are at the table, we open up access to others. When you reach your promised land, don't forget those behind you. And the only way to be successful is everybody successful. Come on, get quiet. That's how all of us can be successful. If you're successful, tell me how you got there. And if you show me how to fish, I won't be robbing you of your fish. Teach me how to fish. And I can fish for myself every day. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Listen, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Brick City. I went to West Side High on South Orange Avenue. West Side. But I wanted to come here in the city of Mount Clare to let our voices be heard. And I told my sons there will be no 2K today. Create your own game. Oh, it's getting quiet now. Stop buying from and make your own. Get an education. Learn how the atoms work. Learn how the administration work. Learn how to go get the money. Cause there's some money hiding somewhere. We just gotta know where to get it. Here with one of the planners of today's march. I'm gonna introduce her as Maxie, but I'm gonna let her introduce her full name to you. Just so happens, she's a neighbor. And you know, in our small world, we rarely know what each other is doing, but when we find out it's all for a good cause, we support one another. Introducing Maxie. Maxie, give them your whole beautiful name. Uh, so my name is Maximiana Lopes, um, and I'm a youth here in Montclair. I'm class of 2015. I just feel like I've been here for such a long time. I've experienced the oppression that we have within our system, and it's time for it to change. Uh, Montclair is diverse, but we still have a lot of cleaning mm -hmm. up to do, so that's why I'm here standing with my people and with not just African Americans, but all who believe that change is gonna come. Now, question, how did you come about with this? Um, you know. Well, so 
For a long time, a lot of people like to tell me, like, oh, you're light-skinned, so you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Both of my parents are African-American, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you see my father, but nobody is white here. Mm -hmm. So uh, my skin might be light, but that's due to colonization. All of us have a voice, and I wanted to use mine. And in Montclair, sometimes African-American kids can be seen as less mm -hmm. or just... This is those people, you know, and mm. I feel like we need to stand up and speak up because we're tired of being on South End. Montclair is ours too, so. Yes, it is. Yes, it, yes it is. And, you know, and I stand proud of my young people in town because they are standing up. They are making their voices heard. What do you want to say in closing out to young people and just to people in general? Don't stop. Um, I feel like a lot of people think that coming to a protest and just standing here for a couple of hours is going to be enough. If you come here and put up a sign and fight for us and walk away and never do anything again, we're going to be stuck in this for a very long time. So. And we'll be back out here marching again, as again. was referenced by Mr. Mossad. Yeah, no justice, no peace. No peace. No peace. Right now, saying, I am here with the dynamic performer, my favorite resident, Mr. Samad Savage. How are you doing, Samad? Screw with it. I'm good. I'm good. Samad has been doing his thing for quite some time here. Land of the free, home of the slave. In certain cities, you'll get smoked for them J's because nobody's safe. Bullets flying, hoping I don't get in the way. Racism is the way of the American race, and we all feel with hate. While Donald Trump paving the way for the KKK. Important that we don't separate. We trapped in this cage, but try to come together before it's way too late. And keep a little friend that could give him a scar on the face. A little wicked is sick and twisted, committed to getting riches that split it between themselves with the tensions that aren't well. Keeping the lower class in the lower class. Not giving them the knowledge that they need to go and and, and today we're out here and we're so, marching and protesting for George, George Floyd, but also we're protesting for Black Lives here. Matter. We I know that all lives matter, but right now we're talking about Black Lives. Today, what yes. does it mean to you? Today, it means a lot to me to see so many different people out here, so many different colors and races. I definitely already got to see that in Newark uh, a week ago, but it's beautiful to see that in this town too, and I feel like a true change is going to come as long as we stick to our guns and really like keep pushing for change in America. So, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about change in America. It's all about that change. As a young person, what are you advocating to your fellow young people? In your twenties, because you're in your twenties now. Yes. You're not a teenager anymore. You're in your twenties. Well, what are you advocating school, to your millennials to on how they should proceed and what they should do? Because I heard you say some wonderful things up on the stage. Mm -hmm. Can you just liter um, literate a little bit about that in reference to um, the unity, um, what's going on in the White House, and how you all can make a change? Well, we definitely need to get out there and vote, register to vote. You know, don't be shy and really like figure out how you can look into every single candidate. Don't just vote blindly. Don't vote for whoever everybody's saying to vote for. Look at your candidates and vote. Vote, vote. That's the biggest thing I can say right now. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing that's going to change stuff. And if it doesn't change after we vote, we're going to be out here again until America consistent, um, consistently provides a change for us. That's it. As the young man said, if things don't change, they're going to be out here again. And those of us that are still around, we're going to be out here again. Peace and love, Samantha Savage, one of my players over. What I mean is I had to change all my toxic ways, was pointing fingers, complaining about love from you in the game. And the homie said it ain't about rap no more, unfortunately. You ain't gotta be nice to pop, unfortunately. Don't need to have knowledge and no pop, unfortunately. Don't need to know what it means to be black, unfortunately. With that said, I gotta stand for the people. We shouldn't be killing each other, you are my equal. And we're here marching for rights and for all types of other things. Today we're here for George Floyd and we're here for mar marching against racism. Right now I'm here with the talented performer, Mr. Jay Wonder. This brother does a song he just performed today that I really, really, really like. If you get an opportunity, to there check out the egalulous video set that is posted on my Facebook page, check him out. He has two videos that I have shared that are my awesome. Mr. J. Wonder, what's up, sir? Where How you doing, man? Have um, we have you here today because I want to find your thoughts on today son. and how it relates to you as a they young black man. Mm. It relates to me a lot. I mean, I have my own experiences with police brutality, you know, um, Today was very powerful. Like I did the walk in Patterson, uh, Philly, um, North New Jersey. Um, today really meant, it, it hit me a little bit harder because I actually cried today. Like I stepped to the side, I had my, yeah, it, I had my little moment, especially when they were talking about a precinct. Like definitely means a lot. And then I've never seen, like two weeks ago, you couldn't even get people to stand next to each other. And now people wanting to give hugs and, you know, showing mad love. So it's beautiful. Definitely beautiful.
What do you have to say to young folks your age in regards to how they should view the future and what they should do to make change? Uh, the first thing I would say is educate yourself, offer it, educate yourself, go out and vote. Um, if you don't know something, it's okay to come to the situation with the, with the glass half full. Like, don't act like you know everything. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't never come to a situation with my glass full. Like, I always come to it half full because I know I could probably learn something. There's something to pour in. Yeah, exactly. I know that you could teach me something. So that's definitely a message that, um, that I want to pass on to the, to the youth. Also, all my young artists, uh, entrepreneurs, pay attention to what you're putting out there because everything that you say, like, um, I don't mean to get too personal, but my ex-girlfriend told me something that will always stick with me. Um, everything that you say that rolls off your tongue casts a spell. You understand what I'm saying? That's so it. what you put out in the universe, you're going to get it back. That's right. You karma. Know what I'm saying? It's about that karma. Word up. Um, so You have something very powerful on your forearm. We're going to end it by you sending love and yeah. giving the power. The power is in his fist right here. Yeah. The power of love. Love. And this is this this the hand I write with too. So you know. <laughs> Jay Wonder, y'all. Check him out. We just got finished the magnificent, well attended march from the Phoenician Wayne Park all the way down here to Crane Park. And I'm here with one of the planners, Miss Alexandria Kerr. Did I say that correct? Alexandria Kerr. Alexandria, Alexandria Kerr. Kerr. I play basketball though. I'm a professional <laughs> basketball. I'm not Steph Kerr, Curry's sister or anything like that though. Alexandria, in planning today, how did it come about? And explain the importance in how you as young people, you decided to step in and do this. Well, as citizens of the United States of America, we are called to stand for justice and what is right. Mm -hmm. When a group of people is being singled out and murdered, and, and, and it's, being, it's being pushed through the system and sweeped under the rug, and we try and speak out and protest, and it's just a protest, and then, you know, a couple, People weeks, home. A couple weeks later, and there's another one. Mm -hmm. So this group of girls from Montclair collaborated with another organization. We came together in pain and hurt in time of hardship. Um, and we wanted, we had a goal and a vision. We all had different ones, but it was the same end mm -hmm. result. We want we want justice. Mm -hmm. We want equality. So we wanted to add longevity to George Floyd and his name and the Black Lives Matter movement by adding even more, educating people on voting, on census, all of that. Mm -hmm. Because what a lot of people don't realize, the census brings money to your community. The census brings about 600 and $78 billion dollars. into the, to community funding. If black people, or one race of people in general, is not filling out that sentence, census, that, 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 that tax money is now going to somebody else. You're mm -hmm. paying somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they could be fixing your streets, when they could be make, building, building buildings in your neighborhood and giving you money mm -hmm. back into your kids. So that stuff is important. Census is important. Voting is important. We, we're not educated on these things. They haven't educated us on these things for, for a reason. They don't want to invest mm -hmm. in us. We have to invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to do that by coming together and giving to each other and uh, coming and just loving each other. And you know, and that's about, it's about loving each other. And again, making sure that police are held and that was basically a lot of what your march was about today. Right. Can you expound on that just a little bit? You have to speak out against what is wrong. There is obviously a problem here. It needs to be recognized. There needs to be, it needs to be denounced through all levels because this is systematic and institutional. It needs to be denounced at all levels and there needs to be zero tolerance. There's no way that these people can be walking free in the in in the streets. They're 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 hurting us. They're killing us. Mm -hmm. They're a threat to public health mm -hmm. and safety. And then when you see that our black brothers and sisters are being killed for insignificant reasons. Innocent man, he went to the store. My dad is an innocent black man that goes to the store every day. Accused of a twenty dollar bill, which they don't out know. To be real. They don't know why we're so hurt. Cause that's that could be my father. Mm -hmm. That could be my brother. One day I want to have a son. 
That could be my son. That could be my daughter getting shot in her bed while she's sleeping. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're taking this so personal. What do you want to say in closing? In closing, I just want us to come together to educate each other, bring each other together, and and heal each other. We need to heal. There's a lot of people in pain. There's a lot of people oppressed. But if we invest in each other and we give and we grow together as one, we will get through this and we will see change. You hear that? Together, we will see change. Thank you so much, Alexander. No, thank you. It was a pleasure. It was keep on marching. You. Keep we on will. fighting. This is not keep over. on protesting. It's a process. Let's go. It's not Power over. to the people. Power to the people. It's how we execute them once we leave our home. We all have our little secrets at home, but it's once we step outside that door, how do we treat one another? How do we speak with one another? How do we greet with each other? Do we send out love, or do we send out walking by, eyes down to the ground and not looking? It's all up to you. We can make a change. Young people, you can make a change. Get out and go! Especially coming into the township as the new mayor and seeing the young people doing this today. What are your thoughts in reference to this? And you know, I'm going to ask, what should we expect from you as the mayor? <laughs> well, thank you for that. And I got to tell you why you frame it up that way, and there's so many thoughts that go through your mind. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, here today, I come at this as a black man. Mm -hmm. I come at this as a Montclair resident. I come at this as somebody who is as angry, frustrated, um, committed to seeing the change that we all want. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you know, I marched and you know, spoke. And did, because I think we all know and we hope that this is going to be different. Mm -hmm. This time is going to be different, right? And we also, I think also, I hope recognize that we're going to have to do something to make mm -hmm. that happen. It's not just today. It's not just tomorrow. It's going to be a long fight, a long road. Um, and we all got to do what we can do, so you talk about it. Mm -hmm. as, as mayor elect and our next mayor, my hope is first and foremost, we've got to engage in the difficult conversations. We've got to make sure we've got everybody at the table. And we've got to make sure we enact the changes that make us a more fair community, right? Mm -hmm. We got to look at the systems that are in place, systems that traditionally are embedded with institutional racism mm -hmm. over generations. Uh, and we have to understand that, and we have to understand that unless we are intentional, we're not going to see those systems change. And that's the word intentional, because we can always say we want to do something, but what is our intent? So when you use the word intentional, that my ears perk up, that means there's hope. 
I, I agree, and I think those those can be defined clearly. Let's say we're talking about an institution like policing. Mm -hmm. What are the policies and practices that we can examine and change? What are the things we can put into place to make our residents, specifically our black and brown residents, mm -hmm. safer? Mm -hmm. But as we look at other institutions, as we look at our schools, what can we do to make sure all of our students, our black and brown specifically, are getting the high-level education they need, are getting the resources, and are getting the opportunities mm -hmm. to also be successful? When we look at banking, what is it that you can do, I can do, we can do, with our pocketbooks, but also with other other actions to say, how do we change a system that deprives uh, and keeps people uh, underemployed or unemployed? Uh, how do we break that system? How do we change it? There are things we can do, specifically in my role, yes, as mm -hmm. an educator, I've got a hat there where I can make change and hopefully fight for change in a system. As a, as a mayor, there's a system that I can be a part of and fight for change and make things happen. I think that's what it takes, but it's gonna take, it always does, more than a person. Exactly. More than a, a couple, it takes a community. Uh, and that's what I'm so proud of though here at Montclair. Mm -hmm. We've always had a community that wants to be involved, wants to be engaged, and wants to be part of getting something done. Exactly, and I just want to commend you for sticking steadfast and strong with affordable housing. Thank you. Because that is something in Montclair that we have been asking for for a long time. So with your backing and you pushing forward with that, we thank you. The residents of Montclair, we thank you for doing that. And we look forward to your tenure as mayor. Well, and I, you know I, if you I, step I, out of line, we're gonna get you. I know you are. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this moment though, because when you talk about affordable housing, and when you talk about things like we did with rent control, mm -hmm. when you talk about all these pieces, we know there's a movement right now pushing back against it. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to everybody out there. When we talk about equality, when we talk about fairness, when we talk about doing what we can, making sure Montclair stays affordable for residents, it's about fairness. It's mm -hmm. about doing something. It's about making sure we put our actions where our words are. So I hope that the community out there who's listening and watching recognizes that when you hear a message or whatever that message may be, I'm sure it's going to be well-funded, we've got to make sure we understand this is about what's doing what's right. It's about doing what's fair. It's about uh, doing more than just speaking to an issue. So I hope In we have everyone's support. What do you want to say to your townspeople? This, especially the nation in Guam, you know, but specifically here in Montclair. What is your message of hope for the township? My message of hope is that it's it's really, at the same time, I gotta tell you, it's, it's hope wrapped in a lot of emotions. Mm -hmm. But I'm hopeful as I watch people's journey here, and some are earlier on in that process, some are thankfully a little mm -hmm. further along. Um, when I watch that, I'm hopeful that people are are recognizing that they need to change or they need to do something they need to be part of this it's not good enough for an african-american male or another african -American. it's not good enough just to watch that and support that i'm i'm hopeful because i see more people engaging saying we're going to do something about this i'm going to speak up i want to be part of this and i want to be part of this for the long term that's what i'm hopeful about um, and i hope that we can help support that push that so it keeps happening you heard it directly from Mayor-elect, <laughs> Mayor Spiller. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my Be friend. Be blessed. You we as look well. forward to your tenure. Thank you. And like I said, we got our eye on uh, you. I know you do. I hope you thank do. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What up, beautiful people? We are closing out here at Crane Park. We had a magnificent day with hundreds of participants. Right now, I'm here with Mr. Abraham Dickinson. We know him as the chef. <laughs> but today, he is standing in a position of advocate and leader for a cause that is very dear to all of our lives. Black Lives Matter. Mr. Abraham, uh -huh. Mr. Abraham, uh -huh. your reason for putting this together. Because you know, he gave me a phone call a couple of days ago and said he wanted to do something this weekend. I didn't think it was gonna be this quick. So yeah. I commend you, the forces and how this all came together and the importance of why. Uh, well, to be honest, I needed something to keep me from acting out. Um, I think after watching Floyd get killed and then watching that reporter get locked up on TV, I felt that sent a, a message to us. They're saying, look, not only will we do something to you off camera, but we're going to lock up your black reporter and we're not going to touch the white guy. To me, that sent a message. Mm -hmm. it, it, it almost sent me over the edge. I, I made some phone calls. I've talked to some people, you know, talked some of my issues out. And I said, you know what, I'm going to put together a, a protest. Um, I threw out the call to action. Yes, you did. I, I said I wanted the police to march with us. And, you know, maybe out of 780 people that responded, 20 thought it wasn't a good idea. But what I found strange, though, out of that 20 people, the majority of people was white folks. Mm -hmm. Okay, And they, they were rude about it. The black folks who did not think it was a good idea, they were not rude. 
So I found that to be very peculiar. Uh, fast forwarding a couple of days later, my uh, daughter said, um, Dad, um, Aja wants to speak to you. She wants to know if um, their group could collaborate with you. Um, this was part of the group that's putting something together tomorrow. So we all talked on the uh, phone and after hearing the different ideas, I felt that I would be doing a disservice to bring the whole group in because that other group, they had their own ideas that I thought were wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that being said, you know, we kind of split it off, you know, came up with our own little our names. And I worked with the other half of the um, high school and our college and our college students and people like uh, Maxie. Uh, we did um, Zoom meetings. Um, we had Hi. to come here. Uh, we had to get um, the person, the personality things. You know, uh, the toxic male thing is always at play. And it was funny because the next Zoom, it was like, uh, Mr. Dickerson, you gotta take it down a couple uh, notches. <laughs> and, it, and it was like, and it was like cool. And I, I, I got it. I, under, I understood it. But I also had to remind them the reason I'm like that too because we don't have that much time. We can't stay stuck on things, you know. I understand how I, yeah, I, I understand how these how these how these things work. So we wind up trusting one 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 another. So um, and I, I told them, I gotta admit, I don't work with grown ups. And those same disagreements that happened with grown ups, it wouldn't have went for it. But we all kinda sucked our pride in, you know, and we came back hours later and we just knocked out the whole itinerary. We made sure everything was gonna be what it's supposed to be. Uh, we didn't know who was going to show up, you know? And as you saw, you had hundreds yeah. of people show. When I saw the images of the people walking from the park, I was amazed. So I, I recorded when y'all started marching from Mission Lane, and I just walked down until the last bit of people trickled down to just a few people. Mm -hmm. But it looked like you had over 500 people marching okay. with y'all. I'm quite sure it was up in the numbers because it was just a flood of people. When I looked down the street, all I saw were heads and signs. Well, our event, didn't go out to Thursday, mm -hmm. and I think. And look at the response. Right. So had our event had went out Monday, cause. Would have been too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. So I mean, well, maybe it was a blessing. And there's another crowd. I'm sure that's gonna be out in full force tomorrow. It's a um, Sunday. Um, it's not too much religious activities happening, and you know the Jewish group that's in, in town here, they're gonna be available to uh, come out tomorrow. Now where is that being held at? Um, the Unity, where does the oh, Unity march Oh, it's going to be starting at the Montclair High School. Yeah. Oh, Montclair High School. So they're marching to Unity, or well, are they marching? Or they're, they're, they're marching, but they're going to be, they have their own little thing. They're going to be splitting up into different directions yes. and going to and tackling different parts of Montclair. Yeah. Yeah, so if, the way I like to think of it is we brought the march from home to the middle. Mm -hmm. They're taking it from the middle. We took it in the fourth ward where we live. Exactly, yes. 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 Yep. So they're going to carry it from this point all the way up to Upper yeah. Montclair. So I will be out tomorrow to support them, definitely. Okay. Yeah. In closing, what would you like to say? And especially to our young people that have taken such a force and leadership to want to be able to do this. What do you have to say? Listen, um, this is a breath of fresh air. And I'm trying not to get too emotional because I'm sincere about what I say. You know what I mean? Um, I, don't miss, I don't miss words. Uh, my daughter, um, she's part of this generation. And I've taught her how to argue. We argue in the house as long as she don't get too rude. But don't say something without doing your research. So mm -hmm. working with them, they, 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 they get their research. They know what they want. Mm -hmm. They know what they want. This is the no compromise generation. So, I mean, some of the language might not be something that we, but it was passionate language. It wasn't derogatory just to be derogatory. You know, it, it, it came from a deep-seated place of pain. So, um, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I just want to tell us men, we got to step it up. I mean, everywhere I go, I see women. All my entrepreneurial business has just all women, all women. And, and we had to seek out some males to find to help us to help us out but um they're they're on they're on point the people's foundation is on point and uh, especially with maxi doing what what she needs what she needs what she needs to do they're going to be a group to be reckoned with so the name of the group is the people's foundation yes it's for the people's foundation oh, follow us on instagram and You're snapchat be a facebook page, right yes facebook okay. is coming but right now instagram for the people foundation thank you I have the privilege and the honor to speak with Deputy Chief Will Young. How are you, my friend? I am fine, sir. Today, um, because everything has been rallied around police brutality, mm -hmm. um, injustice to people of color, and as a man of color and as a deputy chief, 
how do you view today and what is your mission as Deputy Chief as we move into the weeks to come, the months to come, and the years to come in policing and, I guess, um, open exposure for people mm -hmm. to actually see what's going on with our police force and how you handle situations and your service to the community. Okay. Well, we have an, a, a wonderful town here in Montclair, and I've been fortunate enough uh, in Montclair to rise to the level of deputy chief. Uh, our chief, Todd Conforti, is a, a beautiful person. He does everything he can in the, in the community. He uh, enables all of us as his uh, command staff mm -hmm. to do what we have to do to build on our relationships in the community. And as you know, with your community service down there, we, we see our officers down there. We, mm -hmm. we try to be as involved mm -hmm. in the community as you Wally possible. Twist Community Center. Absolutely. We have officers coaching, uh, mentoring, the brother to brother program, sister to sister, and, and it goes on. But it, it's that helps a little bit. But it goes far beyond that. Um, in the police department, an, an administrative standpoint, we try to be as transparent as possible. We have open relationships with NAACP, open relationships with Civil Rights Commission, other civic organizations in, in town. They can reach out to us at any time, and we can reach out to them mm -hmm. at any time. So we have to build on that. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing across the country is part of this, uh, th this shift. It, it, it's a... Uh, I've lost my, my, my thought, but it's a shift in policing that's been mm -hmm. brewing for a long time, you know, and we, we have some work to do, as you can see. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But here in Montclair, we're going to work very hard to be that model, mm -hmm. you know, for all departments. And it doesn't start here. No. It's already started with our Essex County leadership. Uh, I don't know if you got to see the uh, the press release with the Essex County prosecutor, uh, uh the public safety director, mm -hmm. Ambrose. Um, uh, we all met in Newark, um, made a stand, uh, expressed our, our disgust with what happened in uh, Minnesota, and everybody understands. Um, and, and the best way I could put it is, and, and it's going to start here, is mm -hmm. we hear you, we see you, we're with you. Change is now. Change is now. And the most important thing to me is that you all are part of the community. Oh, absolutely. And you are people, absolutely. as you said, with us working out of the Wally Choice Community Center, we see so much mm -hmm. that you all do, you know, that work for the Montclair Police Department. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, no commend problem. Commend you. We're, we're in this together. Exactly. We're in this together. And, you know, so. and, and, and wish you all well as you continue to do your service and your work for the community. Because it's not easy. No, no, And any time you step out the door, you don't know whether you're coming home yeah. or not. But uh, I just want everybody to know that every officer in this township that works here in the Montclair Police Department took an oath to, number one, serve, number two, protect. And we will win the community's confidence, and we'll be able to move forward from here. Y'all heard it, y'all. Deputy Chief Young. We are so grateful for his service and for him being here in Montclair and for him taking hold in what was a beautiful, beautiful day of celebration and a beautiful day of politics. I just like hey, we hear you, we see you, we're with you. Change is now. We hear you, we see you, we're with you. Change is now. Thank you, Deputy Young. Have a good one. You too. There is a load you have to bear. That you can't carry, can't carry on, yeah. I'm I, right up the road. Right up the road. I'll share your load. I'll share your load. If you just call me, you just call me. If you need a friend, call me. If you need a friend, call me. If you need a friend, call me. If you need a friend. Call me. Oh,